Hello, and welcome to Speaking of Summit. I'm Beth Pincus, sitting across from Walter Long, your usual position next <coughs> to me. Actually, you're not a host today. You're a guest today. And I'm delighted to have you as the last guest that I'm going to be interviewing on Speaking of Summit. And it is your last interview on Speaking of Summit as mayor of Summit. We're not going to cry, are we, Beth? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'm feeling fairly joyful. I hope you are as well. You've had a, a nice two-term tenure, and you've been able to accomplish a lot of wonderful things, which we will talk about. But let's not break so much from tradition. Let's go to the way we usually start when you're sitting next to me and kind of do a catch-up, because I know that a lot has gone on in Summit in the past month, and we'll talk about that, and then we'll talk about what's going to go on. But there were some more promotions, and we had alluded to the fact that they were going to happen. So perhaps you can explain the sure. whole 18-month fire transition that we're going well, to have. Well, basically, as you know, Chris Cotter will be promoted to head of community service. And Chris right now has served for the past 10 years as fire chief director of the Summit Fire Department. So with his promotion to community services, naturally it created a vacancy in the fire department. So last Friday, which would have been about December, I don't know, maybe the 5th, I think. It was December 5th. Uh, the safety committee met and promoted Deputy Chief uh, Tom Murray to be Fire Chief Director. And that will be effective on, at the council meeting on December 16th. Now, with the promotion of Fire Deputy Chief Murray to Fire Chief, that creates a vacancy in the Deputy Chief. So Battalion Chief Connolly, who has been with the fire department for, I believe, 29 years, will be Deputy Chief. Okay. Now, this is a transition plan because Deputy Chief Murray, soon to be Chief Murray, retires in 18 months because okay. of age. It's mandatory, mandatory retirement. Got it. Then, in this promotion, is Battalion Chief Joe Houck, will become, in 18 months, deputy chief. Got it. So, and it's interesting because Tom Murray is a summit resident. His father was fire chief. Tom uh, has been with the fire department for 40 years. So it's a transition plan, which will be very, it, it's very positive mm -hmm. and, it, and, and it's the right move. And then obviously there will be a new battalion chief at and then the promotions will that. start after right, that. Again. But as we look forward to it, we've had a new a city administrator. Yeah, we'll let's have go down the list. New well, city administrator who is... It sounds like we're cleaning shop. You've got a new mayor coming in. But what you have is a new city administrator, Stu Brown. Right. You have uh, a new police chief coming on in March. That's Robert Luce. It will replace D Bill Schneller. He was deputy chief. He was deputy chief. Pete Alaria, who was a lieutenant, will become uh, deputy police chief. Now you have the fire department, and then you've got Chris Cotter taking over community services, and then you've got to talk about the Board of Education. You've got a whole new... So, but change is good. So. It is, and this is not change for the sake of change. This is change because of different outside influences or age requirements, as with Chief Schneller and uh, Tom Murray. They possibly would have stayed on longer, but the law doesn't allow that. So, That's right. And, and we have seasoned professionals moving into the spots that they are vacating, so that's good for I would us. have to say in the interviews for both the fire and the police, all the candidates were extremely qualified, and any of the candidates could have filled the spots. So that's we're very good. fortunate. Yeah, that's Successor good. management's a good thing. Now, another spot that couldn't be filled was Santa Claus coming to town. That was too bad because, you know, the first storm of the winter, uh, it was more for safety reasons. The sure. roads were hazardous on Friday the 5th. Um, the Board of Rec was going to give us the showmobile. We canceled the parade, but then the winds were going, and we were getting about an inch an hour. So community services said, hey, we have to plow the roads, and it was called off for, you know, for safety reasons. Uh, unfortunately, also, the bad weather is affecting our downtown merchants, but the community services has done a round-the-clock job cleaning out the lots, getting rid of the snow. So hopefully the weather will cooperate. We've had some heavy rains, which will get rid of the snow. And let's hope, I, I like a white holiday, a white Christmas, but uh, let's ha keep it to a minimum, please. Yeah. Well, um, I'm going to sort of blindside you with this one, but 
downtown there are some streets that are cleared so beautifully and uh, I'm not talking about sidewalks now because that's the merchant's responsibility but the streets that are cleared so beautifully and then there are other streets that are not cleared so beautifully and there are uh, lots of curbs you can't walk off because you can't there's no drainage right so there is a plan uh, Beth that the city uses and it probably has to be revisited every year because we do our main roads first then we do our secondary roads to keep those clear then when the snow stops and they'll do t double runs triple runs to keep that happening but then when the snow stops we will go back clear again but then they have to do the crosswalks for the schools then they get actually into the snow removal in the downtown but it is a it, it is a program that should be revisited all the time and I'm sure Chris Cotter head of community services and Paul Casque will look at that but our crews did work around the clock they you know they go back to community works and sleep there it's a big job oh, yeah. and we do bring in subcontractors and of course the snow just keeps snowing we have no control over that well, as you so. remember I, I got sworn in yes. on January 4th <laughs> and then on January 6th we had of 96 we had the worst blizzard mm -hmm. and that was really baptism under fire but absolutely snow is a problem there's no doubt about it and when you hit it on a weekend it's even more of a problem uh, because your crews are, have already gone home, so you've got to bring them back. The good news is we knew about this storm coming. We didn't know it was going to be as bad as it was. Well, and we thought it was coming the next day. So That's it, right. it had to, Mother Nature, it's not nice to fool with Mother Nature. No, but, it's not. But, you know, we're, we'll come through it, and uh, before you know it, it'll be spring. I just keep telling myself that anyway. Um, but before spring, we have some more holidays. We've come through a beautiful Thanksgiving and now we have Christmas and Hanukkah and um, a couple other things coming. Well, you got New Year's and you have New First Year's Night coming. First Night, yeah. And Beth and Jim Baxley have done a remarkable job organizing First Night. B badges are on sale downtown. Uh, there are posters up announcing the event. It's a wonderful alcoholic uh, free night uh, for both, you know, children and adults, it's a wonderful family event, Beth. So I want to thank Jim and Beth for organizing it as chairs, and hopefully the weather will cooperate that evening. Yeah, and we <clears> know <throat> when they were guests on the show last month, I guess it is, that the venues are all kind of compacted into an area that's a lot easier to yes. access. Yes, so not, not a great deal of walking. Able to, yeah, and if it is particularly cold or snowy or wet or damp, uh, that's, that's kind of a nice thing. So that's sort of bringing us from there to here. Now we have January 6th. Right. Okay. The date has meaning to you and to some other people because that will be the last official day that you will be mayor of the city of Summit. And at that point, Jordan Glatt will become the next mayor. And we know, we've spoken to Jordan, and, and I know Jordan, I believe, has every intention of continuing the speaking of summit tradition um, with a different host but that, that he's going to do that so we hope the communication will be maintained and we know he has some plans some secret plan that he's going to unveil in his acceptance speech what are you going to be talking about in your state of the thank you goodbye speech that that's a, that's a a tough question i i've already started formulating it in my mind i always have written the state of the city messages myself and I'll continue to do so. Um, you know, it's not so much about what we've accomplished because that speaks for itself. I mean, I've had a, a, a wonderful eight years, a uh, wonderful group of volunteers uh, from every board to every capacity. Um, when you talk about TV 36, what a way to communicate. Having the, uh, the monthly show and our specials, <clears throat> it's been great. I can't go anywhere without someone saying, gee, I just saw you on TV. Yeah, again. <laughs> so it's a great communication. Um, I think what I'm more concerned about is as we go forward, um, what are the issues facing Summit? And, you know, what do we have to be aware of? Summit is a unique community, Beth, and I, it, I, I knew it before I was sworn in uh, just because of the quality of mm -hmm. life, but I didn't realize how special. And I think you know it as a volunteer, having been so active. Um, I'm sure it will continue, but uh, one of the key issues is I never had to focus on political party issues. That mm -hmm. was never a concern. Um, I, I, I'm worried about it. I know two-party system is good, 
but uh, I'm hoping we don't get carried away with that issue. The most important thing is what is good for Summit. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping council and the new mayor will work to that degree. The other thing is to accomplish our goals, we need the best possible employees. And I'm confident that the new police department chief and deputy chief, fire mm -hmm. chief, deputy chief, Chris Cotter in community services, Stu Brown, I'm sure education will continue in that area. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to continue to focus on education. Um, we've invested, Beth, a great deal in our infrastructure. And we have to continue to do that and not be afraid of spending tax dollars wisely. And this may sound like a plug for the all turf fields, but it definitely is. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we have to look ahead. We've got roughly 4,000 uh, youth, children, participating in our sports programs. We no don't, have the, we don't yeah. have the facilities, Beth. Mm -hmm. So, so I know that's, anyway. that's well, but the, some of the things that were so close to your heart, the 25 mile an hour speed limit, the sports facilities, things like that, if they remain issues, it is certainly a hope that they will be uh, looked at and advanced in the next administration as well. Um, I don't think anybody had to guess what it was you thought or felt, and you were always very open and and forthcoming about that for the community, and I, that was a good thing for the community. There was no second guessing. Now, you're going away as a public political figure. What do you see as your role now? Actually, I'm hoping council will keep me, uh, um, you know, informed of what's going on, and if they need some help, uh, I do have a business downtown. I am gonna stay in town. I'm, I don't wanna retire, I'm too young to do that. So I would like to stay involved. Um, I think I know that Janet Whitman and Ted Alcott and former council members were very helpful to me during mm -hmm. the transition. They were always there. Uh, they didn't give advice unless I asked for it. And uh, I'm hoping Jordan and, and council members will do that. Because um, there are some issues, um, liaisons with corporations, issues. Uh, I know I can't help them with the county very much. But, um, you know, that is a major concern mm -hmm. I have with county government. And, of course, county government will continue to be an issue, so there's very little that we can, you know. That's exactly right. Yeah, it will do, as, as the train, you know, stuff. I can't even think of a, a better name to, to give well, it. Well, the train is a major issue, and we had a, a disappointment with the court ruling the other day uh, saying that uh, the county had all, you know, what did sign a contract legally and the contract is binding with M&E. But I still think we have to look at the safety, the environmental, the economic impact on that. As you heard, Governor uh, McGreevy did not sign the gasoline mm -hmm. tax, which is going to have a terrific impact on, uh, you know, transportation in the state. So there's a lot going on. Yeah. <clears throat> the, the one thing is the municipalities have to have more power um, and be freed up from state, county, and federal mandates. So I think that's one of the things that this council is going to be challenged with. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's always the problem when you talk about the power is that if it's state mandate, it needs to be state pay. That's exactly right. And that's a huge problem. State can mandate something out the wazoo and expect us to have funds to implement it. That's where our budgets go awry. And I think people doing this show over the years has at least educated me. I hope the people who have watched have been as educated as to the way some of th these things work. When people become upset about a raise in their tax structure, they need to sometimes understand that the city has been financially responsible and has not had anything to do with the raise. The increment has come because of something that's been state or, or county or, or federally mandated without funds to back up. Beth, very interesting point. Having worked with council now for eight years, <clears throat> um, you know, people are reluctant to accept change and are skeptic of political leaders. Summit is unique in the sense that these leaders are not paid. These leaders are volunteers. There are very few politicians in Summit that have gone on to uh, other political positions. So there's not much in it from an individual standpoint other than self-gratification mm -hmm. of what they're doing for Summit. And what we've learned is when we listen to the public and we can explain within reason uh, or, or reasonably why we're not doing something or why we are doing mm -hmm. something, the public often will understand that. 
And I think communication. Uh, Gil Oren uh, has become a great friend. Gil always said, you build consensus. If we build consensus, Dr. Knowlton was a terrific, with Speak Up yeah. Summit, consensus builder. And when we do that, then the public then knows. Okay, well, what I want to say to you is building consensus, educating, communicating, all of that has been a part of this. You don't know everything, however. Uh, Carol, if you could turn the monitor on in the studio, that would be very helpful. Uh, Jerry, our wonderful editor who's been working on the show with us since we started, along with Carol Papal, who is our tremendous guts of this thing, pulls it together, gets all of our crews together, and Hyacinth Muller, who, Hyacinth Essen, who is our director, and I, we've sort of been in collusion here. And we've put together a little tape that we would like to show uh, our viewing audience today. And I think it begins with uh, your first debate. So oh, we're swell. going. for mayor, seated in the next two seats, are Walter Long, and next to him is Judy McClendon. And our first speaker will be Walter Long. Why am I running for mayor? And a lot of people say you're crazy, and I'm sure you've all heard the same thing. The message I would leave, everybody, don't worry. If I have a problem, I'll call Janet. Hopefully everybody will have a terrific evening. Happy New Year. Four days after uh, I took the oath, we got inundated with, what, 24 to 30 inches of snow. And I would ask the citizens to look at uh, TV 36, you know, see if we have an emergency going on. Through an open dialogue, we can communicate and we can solve our problems. And thanks to TV 36. TV 36 has been terrific, you know, uh, broadcasting uh, council meetings. I know you were over v videoing or taping the dunking. People have referred to me as uh, Mayor Blizzard, <laughs> you know, because of last year. We'd like to present you with the key to the city. I have already told the mayor he has nothing to fear from me. I have no throwing arm whatsoever. I can't <laughs> do it. <laughs> as we face our centennial in 99 and as we face the millennium coming up, great deal to accomplish. We're well, optimistic. Before we start, Year. Happy New Year to you, yeah, and it's our first you. show of 1999, yeah. our centennial. It really is an exciting event. Costumes are terrific. I believe in communication, uh, sending the message out to people, trying to get current news out, and TV 36 has really helped us. And Walter, something very special missing from the street fair this year because of the drought. The uh, sprinkler in the back, I mean... The... Yeah, and the dunk booth. The dunk booth, and I'm glad about that because the water was cold. <laughs> but we'll take a rain check on that. Yeah, absolutely. Literally. No pun intended. We've got our own parking facility. Uh, I've heard no negative remarks about it. It's very positive. It is open. It's clean. It's safe. It's attractive, I believe, from the exterior. Speaking with Mayor Walter Long. Walter, come back here, Walter. Walter's dancing. Walter's dancing with Billy. <laughs> Everybody have a good time today? Yeah! How good a time? Yeah! That's, that's terrific. What a wonderful history, making year 1999 so special for the city of Summit. Tonight is our chance to say thank you to some very special Summit citizens, including our centennial citizens. I do solemnly swear, I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully, I will faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly, justly, perform all the duties, perform all the duties of the office of mayor, I'm all of the office of the mayor. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. <clears throat> You're sworn. Congratulations. It seems like only yesterday I took the oath as your 27th mayor. The job is extremely challenging and demands a great deal of time, but it is very rewarding 
because Summit's a great city. But unlike the blizzard of 36, the problem now is it's been very, very cold. And where they have plowed, it's now ice. And if you go downtown in the morning between 6 and 8, you'll see them removing that snow in the downtown to yeah. provide for parking. However, I'm hoping you meant the blizzard of 96 and not 36. I said 96. Did I say 36? <laughs> oh, well, well I said good news. I don't remember the blizzard of 36. Do I. Um, it was 96. The council, the safety committee, uh, the police department, the fire department, the volunteer first aid squad, everybody's concerned about safety. We're not just talking pedestrian safety. We're talking safety in the schools. We're talking safety in the homes. We're talking speeding. <laughs> this is our first Memorial Day celebration of the 21st century. Quite an event and one that we all want to remember. So it basically shown where the car would end up if you were under the influence of alcohol. I smell beer or something like that. Keep it going. I do too. Whoa. Oh, just right side damage, sir. Just lost control. You're all over the road. Get back on the highway again. Wise guy. Give it some gas. I'd like to introduce uh, Senate candidate John Corzine, personal friend of mine. We haven't had a chance to talk about many political issues, but I'm glad to he see you here in Summit today, John. It's always great to be with Walter, and it's great to be on Summit. I'm very excited, Beth. That's all I can really say. You take a look around you, see all the people. You hear the bagpipers. You see the attendants. And the weather wasn't so great today, but we're in the garage. Mia Anderson and Jesse Butler and their committee did a great job. Welcome, Santa. Ho, ho. Merry Christmas to work for the interests of the people who need an effort. In fact, he's on TV 36 well, today. Go. A priority at a busy so, time. Absolutely. The first question is, do I like being mayor? And the second is, how hard is the job? The answer to the first is, I love being mayor. And to the second, it's an easy job, but very busy, interesting, and challenging. We do encourage suggestions. If someone has a suggestion of how we can improve the system, we're not perfect. Uh, and we would request any suggestions and we'll try to put it into the plan. This has been a busy, eventful year. I think always in some it's busy and eventful, but this year more than ever. And, and a lot more coming up. A lot more coming up. We're all suffering, not only as a community, but as a nation and also the entire world. All people, regardless of race, religion, or creed, have gathered together, not only here tonight, but throughout the world, to ask for peace in this world. I congratulate the folks, uh, Mayor Long, and all of the folks that put this together, because that's really what it's about, touching hands and hearts together, and uh, it certainly touched me. You know, we look to the two of you for leadership to, to take us through things like this. I know it's a huge task, but we are appreciative. Uh, what's next for us here in Summit, Walter? Actually, Beth, it comes right from the top, from the president uh, right down through, uh, you know, the Senate, Congress, and whatnot, and to the leadership of town. You know, they said, let's get on with our lives and let's do it. Uh, we had a wonderful service tonight. Now let's get on with it and uh, let's bond together. Uh, let's get over this hatred and uh, just keep going. It's a day, not only in, in the United States, time out and remember what happened on September 11th, 2001. I was asked to speak about what is a hero. And as Sergeant Kelly said, the dictionary, a hero is someone who does an extraordinary unselfish act or makes a determined effort for change in the face of difficulty. Well, September 11th, 2001 certainly produced a lot of heroes. We will always remember those affected by the tragedy of September 11, 2001. I'm proud to be the mayor of this great city. I'm proud of council. I'm proud of the citizens of Summit. Thank you for your support and encouragement. God bless you all. God bless America. And good night.
seek to summit and any successful community, and I'm going to say Summit is one of the best, is the volunteers. I mean, we have great volunteers, um, and it, they really make things happen in this community. SDI. Well, that's been a heated uh, discussion since I was elected in 1996. On June 1st, International Children's Day in the United States will be celebrated. This holiday should be recognized by everyone, regardless of their political affiliation, religious preference, organizational membership, or school. We're here tonight to hear five presentations from people involved in this reactivation of the Rollway Valley Railroad. What do you see as the challenges facing the city and you as the next mayor? Well, the biggest challenge is doing as good a job as this guy right here. <laughs> I have a tough shoes to I, I fill. But I can tell you, in eight years, it has been, honestly, the best experience of my life. I guess we're back, Walter. Uh, I saw it for the first time today as well. First, I just want to thank Jerry Roche for a beautiful job of editing that piece. Um, apologize for taking you by surprise, but I think we were all entitled to that historic walk through your term. You're speechless. Beth, I am speechless. Uh, uh, one of the great things about being the mayor of this town is I've met some wonderful people, and uh, I mean, that's, that's very touching. Um, I, I, there are too many people. I mean, Hyacin, Carol, uh, Jerry, yourself, uh, everybody with TV 36. Uh, for a while there, listening to it, I thought I was a, a paid employee pushing <laughs> TV 36. Yeah. But I am, I'm not at a loss for words, but it, it, I can't tell you how appreciative I am of that and how much my family will enjoy seeing that, you know, in the years to come. It brought back a lot of great mm -hmm. memories in it. Well, there uh, are we really a covered a lot of stuff, yeah. didn't we? Yeah, we did. And this is our last minute. And I want to thank you for the opportunity of working with you over these eight <clears> years. <throat> it has been a trip, Walter. Uh, an exciting trip, uh, a fun trip, an educational trip. But most of all, the friendship that we have developed over these eight years are what I will take away with me when I leave. I thank you. And for the people of the City of Summit, we thank you. Beth, you're very kind, but I want to thank all my friends at TV36 and all my friends in the city of Summit and outside the town. Uh, it's been a wonderful eight years, and I look forward to helping the new administration doing whatever they can. Well, thank for, you, Beth. for Walter Long, for Carol Papal, for Jerry Roche, for Hyacinth Essen, and for all of the crew, and I'm not going to start naming because over the eight years, we have had a lot of people <coughs> working with us. Scott Wands was director for a while. We've had a lot of wonderful people. But for all of them, and for TV 36, I'm Beth Pincus. Thank you for watching. Happy holidays, everybody. I'm Brian McKnight for RAD, recording artists, actors, and athletes against drunk driving. When you're traveling during the holidays and you see someone who's had too much to drink about to get behind the wheel, get those keys. Friends don't let friends drive drunk.